वेलकम फ्रेंड्स दिस इज द लास्ट वीडियो ऑफ द एरिमा सीरीज रिमेंबर इन द फर्स्ट वन वी डिस्कस द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ एरिमा एंड देन इन द सेकंड वन वी जस्ट इंट्रोड्यूस द मेथडोलॉजी सो नाउ इन दिस वीडियो आई विल इंप्लीमेंट दोज मेथड्स विथ अ पर्टिकुलर सेट ऑफ डेटा सो दिस इज द डेटा इन कॉलम ए बाय द वे दिस डेटा इज नाउ इट इज इन एक्सेल सो आई विल कॉपी दिस टू मिनी टैप सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल द डेटा इन फर्स्ट कॉलम इज द पीरियड नंबर and the second column is the data so i will copy this from here and here is my mini tab i will paste this here so i will give a heading number heading name period and data so now remember this is the first step so the first step of our methodology was to check the stationarity so how to do that you just uh, first of all we will need to develop the time series plot so just develop the time series plot using the data and just by looking at the time series anybody can say that this is a non stationary data that means a trending data it is not a non trending data and to be very sure you just need to check the auto correlation so you go to time series and auto correlation from here then again enter data here and click on okay so once you do this you can see here this is a dying off behavior that means the auto correlation values under different lags are actually dying out reducing gradually so this is a, an indication that the data is non stationary so we have seen in the time series plot as well as the auto correlation graph in both the cases we have established that it is a non stationary data so now if it is a non stationary data then we cannot directly process the arima or arma in a sense so in that case what should we do we should go for differentiation so all these things are written in step 1 in the previous video so if you have not gone through that video please watch that video before watching this video so i will provide a i button here so please check that from here so now we will take the difference for that go to time series differences so difference of what difference of this data c2 column and then the store uh, what uh, this means store differences in which column that means differences will be calculated but we want to see the difference in which column so i will select this c3 column because this is blank till now so write c3 here and the difference is of lag 1 so keep this one and click okay so now this is the difference so for example if you take difference of this second data first data from second data you will get minus 0.0999 and so on so now you check the auto correlation again on the difference data auto correlation on c3 this time so click on okay so now you see only the first one the first auto correlation value that is coming out of this control limits and rest all are not significantly different from zero so therefore this is a peculiar uh, cut off behavior and since this is a cut off behavior we can say that the difference data is stationary so that is the end of step 1 where we was showing that the data is stationary after differentiation of lag 1 so now we will come to step 2 so what is the step 2 in step 2 we have to find the possible models that means once we have established the stationarity it is now the time to see which all models can be fitted in this particular data so again you see you have the auto correlation data already for the differences so now take out the partial auto correlation also this partial auto correlation again enter c3 here note that in, in this case also you have to enter the differentiated data so enter c3 here and okay so this is your partial auto correlation almost similar to the auto correlation result that means the first first one first auto correlation value 
uh, that means in lag one it is uh, significantly different from zero otherwise it is not significantly different from zero for the other lags so that means it is a cutoff behavior and therefore both acf and pacf both are giving you cutoff behavior and cutoff after which lag after lag one so now if you can just recall in the presentation in the ppt slides that we had introduced in the last video we had developed this particular table where we are seeing that if a both cutoff behavior are present in the data in both acf and pacf then so if you can remember in the last video we had discussed this particular table where we have shown shown you that the cutoff behavior if it is present in acf then it is a maq model and if the cutoff behavior is present in pacf then it is a arp model but in this case as you can see here the this cutoff behavior is present in both the cases that means in partial autocorrelation as well as as well as in autocorrelation that means pacf and acf in both these cases cutoff behavior are present so what to do now then only one thing you can do is you should test both the ar1 model and ma1 model why ar1 model because this cutoff was found in after the first lag so you should replace q with 1 and therefore ar1 model similarly the autocorrelation result also the cutoff is found after the first lag so for maq you should replace q is equal to 1 so ar1 ma1 now see very clearly here that uh, in step 1 we have introduced the first order of difference that means difference of lag 1 so that means it cannot be ar model or ma model or arma model what it should be it should be an arima model that means because we have taken a difference in step 1 so that means it is going to be an arima model so what all arima models should you check so you should check arima 110 or arima 011 so when you are checking arima 110 this gives you the arp model and when you are checking arima 011 model then it is giving you the maq model so this is the end up step 2 where you are identifying the possible models so you have identified two possible models arima 011 and arima 110 so why the center one is coming center one is coming due to the difference that we had taken in step 1 so let us come to step 3 now what is step 3 step 3 is directly the implementation of the model so for that you will go to stat then um, time series again and then arima so you see we will test two models first one is 1 1 and 0 and now in this case we do not need to enter this c3 that means the difference data when we are saying that it is an arima model the software already knows that we have taken the difference so we will actually enter the original data here that means c2 or the data column so once you entered this go to graph because you see we have to check several checkpoints so make sure that you have selected this one and this four in one these two options has to be selected and you can select the time series plot also but we have already seen the time series plot so don't bother so click on okay and then again okay so see this is the ar1 model so keep it here the test the second model second model is your which one this will be 0 this will be 1 and this will be again 1 rest all things are uh, similar this is 
this should be checked and click on ok so these are the two models you have now by the way this is the end of your step 3 where you have implemented the possible models now you are going to select the best model out of these two so how to do that so we have introduced uh, these checkpoints these are the checkpoints that i have already listed down from the slides that we have discussed in the previous video so again i am saying if you are not watching the previous video that is very important please watch that video and then come back here otherwise you will be confused so these were the six uh, basically six checkpoints for the models based on this these six checkpoints we will check these two models that we have identified as our possible models and based on that we will select the best so let us come to the uh, ma1 model first or say ar1 model first so this is my ar1 model so what is the first checkpoint first checkpoint is residual normality so in the in in this plot you will see this normal probability plot and check whether these blue points are almost following this red line or not if they are following the red line that means the data is normal you see clearly these points are almost like following this red line so therefore your residuals are normal for what for this arima 110 model this is the ar1 model by the way and this is your ma1 model and uh, then again come here then what is the second checkpoint second checkpoint is residual time sequence that means these residuals are varying this is the time series what is the nature of the plot so see almost equal number of residuals are coming both above and below the zero line and also there is no trend that means this this is almost flat so you can say here no trend and random so residuals are randomly plotted and there is also no trend okay then what is the third checkpoint third checkpoint is your residual autocorrelation should be within plus or minus 2 by square root of n so how to ensure that so i have taken out the cf of residuals so just identify the highest values you see just by looking at it you can say that this is the highest uh, autocorrelation that we have found so far although the autocorrelations are actually practically not significantly different from zero because they are coming within these two lines so uh, still you check this highest one that means point which one this one is point 0.215484 so your ACF value is 0.215 right and what is your this value 2 by square root of 65 why 65 you have this data if you see the excel data we had 65 entries so 65 data points were there so in our case n is equal to 65 so enter that so this is our cutoff value so now you see 0.215 is less than 0.248 so this is also satisfied a serial autocorrelation is less than this one less than this one okay so what is the fourth checkpoint fourth checkpoint is p value of the regression line that means the ar1 line this one should be less than or less than 0 0.05 so you see here your p value is 0 0.023 so 0 0.023 which is less than 0 0.05 correct then this young box statistics come to this young box statistics these are the statistics you check the p values all the p values are greater than 0 0.05 so all the p values are greater than 0 0.05 this is also checked and what is the mean square value the mean square value you can find it here 3.53564 
3.53564 so please remember friends we are doing the last uh, step of this arima series this is the interpretation of the data or the checking of the data by which we will find the one just one model out of many selected as the possible models in our case we have selected two possible models we are trying to see which one of them is the best so now we have checked the ar1 now let us come to ma1 model so this was our ma1 model just uh, again check these points residual normality just go to the plot this is again you see these blue points are following this red line so normal residual time sequence see here also here also residuals are plotted like randomly below and above the zero line and there is no significant trend so again we will say the same thing here and then residual autocorrelation residual autocorrelation here also you can see the highest value is this one how much is this this is 0.207 Remember in in this case our value was 0.215. That was itself less than 2 by square root of n. So now this 0.207 will also be less than point this this one. So we can we should not calculate that. We can understand that. So now the p value of the regression line, p value of the regression line, this ma1 line, see 0 0.021, 0 0.021, 0 0.021. Which is less than 0 0.05 okay so and this young box statistics these are also you see point greater than 0 0.05 these are all also greater than 0 0.05 and the mean square value mean square value is 3.53773 3.53773 so now what you can conclude from here is all these checkpoints are giving you wonderful results in both the cases and uh, since you have found that the p value of the regression line is less than 0 0.05 that means the model is significant this model is significant this is also significant i have discussed these things in the last video again and again i am saying the same thing because that is important and since uh, this is these uh, young box statistics are greater than 0 0.05 the model is adequate this model is adequate and this model is also adequate so now see this is significant this is significant this is adequate this is also adequate all these are okay perfectly fine so now what should be the selection criteria i have also discussed this in the last video so if everything is perfect for all the models then you should check the ms value now in case of ms value you can clearly see that the ms value of your ar1 model is little better than the ma1 model although these two are almost equal but this is little better little lower than this value so therefore we finalize the ar model ar model is our best model in this case we will say and now what is the last step what should be the last step now this is our final model so AR1 is our final model. So what should we do? What is the entire purpose of this exercise? The entire purpose of this exercise was to forecast. Forecast for the future. So how to do that? So let us come to again come to Arima. And now this time forecast. You need to give your lead. Lead means how much period ahead. For example, I want the five period ahead data. So I have 65 up to 65. I want 66, 67, 68, 69, 70 for five period forecast. So I will click on OK and OK. So again, it has generated the AR1 model. Okay, I am sorry. This is MA1 model. So I will have to do this for AR1 model because I have not changed the data. One and zero this is the air on model we have seen that the air on model is the best model for us and the forecast is lead five and you click on ok so this is your result and see this is your forecast so these are the forecast and they have given you the 95 percent confidence intervals also 
so this is how you will implement any arima model and this was a simple model you may encounter little complex models where you need to check the ar1 and ma1 values uh, other models also arma models also that means ar ma ar arima 111 also is possible and sometimes the acf and psf uh, plots may not be that much clear so for example this is the this was the acf so you see it was very clear to identify ar1 or ma1 but in some cases it may also possible that things could be confusing little so that's it that's all about the arima series and i need to mention also here that i am closing my series that means the business forecasting right now right here and if you have any query or if you want any other topic to be considered or if you feel that some important area of this business forecasting series is missed out then uh, let me know i will try to include that in separate videos so let us meet in the next video with some new fresh new topics so until then goodbye and thanks for watching this video